and it's going to help your cat associate it as food because mm. your cat's likely seeing it and being like, this isn't my food. And that's why she's <laughs> turned off. Not because yeah. it's wet, not because it's this, just, she's just see, not seeing it as food. Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho. And this is part two of my collaboration with my good friend, Mellow Cat. Today, we're talking about why cats are picky and some juicy tips to feed your cat better. So I have one very fat cat, which is um, mm -hmm. Mui Mui. You'll see her walking by. Um, so she's a chonker. And what happens is that I have uh, five automatic feeders at home and she'll eat everybody's leftover. And uh, mm. as you can see, my cats, none of my cats eat like that. So she actually get really fat over time. And when I put her on a diet, um, she goes into panic mode and she'll start stealing food and she got even fatter. My other cats got mm. skinnier, but she got fatter. Um, so I, I don't know what to do with that. And not only that, she doesn't eat anything other than kibbles. Um, mm. So that's what I was thinking. Like, do you, th do you think there's actually an answer to, to that, that I can actually fix these two problems? Because I heard from some people that, um, you know, eating kibbles will actually make them even fatter if that's the only part of their diet. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, because kibble is very high in carbohydrates and starchy ingredients, and mm. that's what holds the kibble shape together. So it's absolutely necessary in kibble, but it's not necessary to the cat's diet. So typically what happens is carbohydrates and starches break down into sugar, and that fuels hunger and mm. obesity. So the more the cat eats the kibble, the hungrier the cat will be. And that's why cats are more likely to overeat and then gain weight when they're eating a dry food diet. Additionally, wow. dry food is very low in meat-based protein. So mm. the cat has to eat more of it for it to actually be nutritious. Because again, they can't utilize carbohydrates. They use animal protein and animal fat as a source of energy. Wow. So you're saying the more they eat, the hungrier they are, the less satisfied they are. Yeah, but it's it's kind of a vicious, vicious circle because you don't want to feed less kibble because then you're going to be feeding less nutrition. Mm -hmm. Solution would be to feed, you know, a better quality food. And in terms of the cat being, quote unquote, addicted to kibble, it typically comes down to the flavor enhancers and palatants, <clears throat> excuse me, that pet food manufacturers add to the food because they know that cats aren't grain and carb eaters by choice. So they spray things like animal fat and restaurant grease on the food. And that's what makes the cat more enticed to eat it so that it's actually nutritious for the cat. But then they develop an addiction to these flavor enhancers. They're very keen on smells. So if you smell kibble and then you smell raw food, there's a big difference. <laughs> you know, raw food doesn't smell at all unless you're feeding stinky green tripe. But dry food has a very strong odor. So the solution might be to add a healthier flavor enhancer palatant, which I always recommend fresh, uh, excuse me, freeze dried minnows because they have a strong, powerful smell. And that's one of the healthiest treats that you can give. And if it's freeze dried, it's easy to break apart and kind of crush up and sprinkle over the food. And there are food toppers as well, like there's a couple of brands that make dinner dust. And so another great pet food topper is liver powder. And typically it's dehydrated or freeze dried and then ground into a powder. So you can just easily sprinkle that over the food. The cat probably won't even know that it's there. Or mm. if your cat does notice that it's there, you can do like a layer of kibble and then sprinkle and then a layer of kibble. And then as your cat's eating, maybe, you know, he, she won't notice that she's eating a little uh, boost of nutrition. <laughs> so oh. it'll kind of upgrade the, the actual food, upgrade the nutrition, and that'll help your cat get used to eating better quality ingredients. But it'll also help satisfy your cat a little more because of the nutritional boost. No, but that's it, right? Um, remember how I told you, like, my fatty cat? By the way, the fatty cat is this guy's uh, younger sister. She, she's not anywhere mm. near this size. And Aww. what happens <laughs> is that, as I said, she doesn't eat wet food at all, right? Do you think using this, uh, what is it, the crushed up minnows, do you think that can be used as, like, a transition or kind of like a gateway food to get her to eventually start eating wet or maybe ultimately even raw? I think uh, as a standalone food, no, but as a smell mm. attracting, yes. Like, for example, you know, just off offering freeze-dried minnows, that's not a complete and balanced diet. So it would be more appropriate to use it as a food topper. So I actually have a, a full transition guide that we can send to your audience. But mm -hmm. basically, the, the first step is to feed your cat at scheduled meal times. 
right. instead of leaving dry food out all day, which is what most people do. Because mm -hmm. when you leave the food out all day, that entices the cat to graze on, on food all day. And then when you try to feed wet food, all of a sudden they know that they can refuse it and then you'll just cave and, and <laughs> offer the dry food. <laughs> So scheduled meal times <laughs> is number one. Okay. Uh, and then I and then I say to introduce some pet food toppers um, so that you can upgrade the actual bowl and get your cat used to eating better quality ingredients. Because okay. cats are really sensitive to food changes and they're also reluctant to changes. This is just a natural instinct mm -hmm. that they have. You know, any changes in their environment could mean you know, like chaos, you know, if you lived out in the <laughs> wild and you relied on doing the same things and routines and doing everything the same every day, then you know, okay, well, I've survived so far, so I'm going to keep doing the same things every day. So it's, cats are very in tune. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. So um, now you mentioned uh, crushed up minnows. What are some other stuff that like smells really, well, really bad to humans, but very attractive to them? Because I don't think I can actually find crushed up minnows here. Not that easily anyway. Any other stuff okay. that smells just as bad? <laughs> green tripe. <laughs> I don't know if you would be able to get that either, but mm. so green tripe is the lining of the stomach of ruminant animals, grass grazing animals like cow, sheep, lamb and goat. And the, uh, the lining of the stomach contains a little bit of pre-digested plant matter uh, okay. because green tripe is not cleaned. It's not bleached. It's not scalded. Whereas white tripe that you buy at the grocery store has been cleaned out. So there's none of that plant material in there. It, there's like nothing yeah. in it. That's what makes it all white. It's, it's that bleaching exactly. process. It's not that good either. Mm -hmm. That's what hurts. Same thing for humans. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. There's, there's little very little nutritional value, if any at all. Basically, they bleach and scald it to appease our eyes, <laughs> just so it looks pretty for us. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, it, so, it's always that way, isn't it? It, it pleases yeah. the human, so we'll pull out our wallet, but then we forget yeah. about what pleases them, right? Exactly. And that's the, actually, that's a great point with kibble because they add uh, colors as well to make it all these different colors like orange and green and yellow. <laughs> Cats don't care what color their food is <laughs> because yeah. when you have a bunch of rendered ingredients, it basically comes out gray because they're cooked. It's cooked meat and then they render it, you know, they pressurize it multiple times. Yeah. So the end product is gray without those colors. So mm. the manufacturers think, well, humans don't want to feed gray food. They don't want to eat gray food. <sighs> so they add these things to please us but it doesn't do anything positive for the cats. <laughs> anything else that you can get, like in terms of freeze-dried, any type of freeze-dried treats, chicken liver, chicken heart, turkey heart. Heart and liver are the most common that you'll find, unless it's a freeze-dried raw food. Mm -hmm. You could absolutely use a complete balanced freeze-dried raw food, but mm -hmm. instead of rehydrating it, just pretend that it's dry food. Because ah. it really looks very similar to kibble, and it's a little crunchy because it's dried. So instead of rehydrating it, you kind of sprinkle it in, you know, one or two yeah. pieces. Like, let's say the bowl is 50 pieces kibble. Put one piece freeze-dried raw food. <laughs> Let the cat eat it. Just walk away. Pretend that it's dry food. Because the cats also pick up on our energy. Mm. So if you're going to stand over and watch them, like, oh, are they going to eat it? Are they going to eat it? It's That's different than what you normally do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're going to pick up on that and be like, okay, something's off. Maybe I shouldn't eat this. She's acting different. That's so true. just put it in the bowl, walk away, pretend that it's dry. And then each day you would gradually increase the amount of freeze-dried food, slowly decrease the amount of kibble. And as long as it's a complete and balanced freeze-dried raw food, you can feed as much as your cat will allow. Just remember to take out equal parts kibble because you don't want to overfeed your cat. Actually, one more thing that I wanted to add um, was... Um, Remember how I said I was trying to transition one of my cats to wet food? Um, now yeah. I'm doing something very tricky because she doesn't eat churu or any of those meat treats, like nothing, right? So what I do is I actually take some wet food and I just add some water, take a butter knife, and I smear it like on the on the side of their food dispenser, mm. like the bowl that it's dispensing into. So each each side have like a little smear of wet food, and she absolutely yeah. hated at the beginning that that she just refused to eat from whatever bowl, right? But because some of my cats, you know, most of my cats will actually eat wet. So what happens is that they actually well they'll they'll clean it off, right? But there's still some residue. Right, that smell is still there. So she's kind right. of like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever, right? So sometimes she will get to the point that when 
I don't know, when there's like a one cm size of wet food there, she's like, okay, fine, I'll eat off the, this dish. That's the progress that we're at right now. But quite yeah. slow, but I think she's hating it less. But she's not eating it. She's just eating in its presence. So it Yeah, and that's, that's, that's pretty much like a last resort that I tell people, you know, if, if none of these tricks work, then you're just going to have to put the wet food alongside the dry food, just a small amount. Because mm -hmm. even if your cat doesn't eat it, your cat's going to learn that it's part of mealtime and it's going to help your cat associate it as food because mm. your cat's likely seeing it and being like, this isn't my food. And that's why <laughs> she's turned off. Not because yeah. it's wet, not because it's this, just, she's just see, not seeing it as food. So mm. if you put it next to the food, yes, I understand you might waste some food, but at the end of the day, in the long term, if your cat learns to accept wet food, then the waste is worth it. <laughs> yeah, I, I The think waste so too. and the weight is worth it. <laughs> And you can check out this video right over Mia for my full transition guide specifically formulated for picky cats. Thanks for watching.